Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. I feel like this might be the same sweater that I wore in my last video. I don't know what it is. My outfit choices. My sense of fashion is so out of whack. All right, well, today we have another video. And thank you to everybody who subscribed and everybody who watched the last video. Really, really happy with the... Uh, but just the turnout on that, uh, it means a lot, especially since uh, I had to lose my other channel. So it was nice coming back to the new channel and being like, oh, this is going to suck. I'm going to have to start all over again. But a lot of you guys showed up, um, which I really, really appreciate. Uh, it means a lot to me, honestly. But uh, I did promise you guys more videos, obviously more content. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that you already know what this video uh, was coming. And that is I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite books of 2021. Possibly my favorite book of 2021. And I say that lightly in the sense that I don't read a lot. Like, I don't read a lot. I'm trying to read more. But of all the books I read in the year 2021, Anno Domini, um, this is my favorite book by far. My favorite book of all the books that I, that I read. And that book is Quentin Tarantino's first novel, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Now, I have the hardcover edition with me right here. Uh, when I originally got the book, I got the soft cover edition, uh, which, is, which I currently have on loan out to a friend of mine right now. They're reading it. Uh, but I did get the hardcover edition. I had to have it the second I saw that there was a, uh, an ad for it, I guess, in the back of the soft cover edition. So yeah, I'll go over the story, uh, what I felt about it, my basically review of the story, how I feel like it compares to the movie, whether I like the movie and the book more, and I'll show you some of the cool little extra stuff that this has um, in it because it's really, really cool. But uh, yeah, so let's start with the book itself, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, a novel and how I feel about it. This obviously is virtually a very similar story to what we saw in the film, right? Cliff Booth, Sharon Tate, Rick Dalton, going through 1969 Hollywood. Um, and yeah, every event that you see in the movie is in the book. And the book basically has a lot of scenes that are either fleshed out, more fleshed out than they are in the film, or has new scenes entirely, new locations entirely, and uh, a lot of background, different background on these characters. So what you've seen in the movie is virtually what you're going to get in the book to an extent. Um, you have to know that when reading the book, there's a lot of alternate versions of those scenes. Like I said, alternate versions, extended versions, and also a lot of background given on uh, these characters that you may not have known before which I think was one of the most fascinating parts of this entire book and the experience of it because I've had this issue before where I've seen a movie and I've read the book the movie was based on um, and I've been very bored reading the book because I was just like, I'm reading the movie that I've already seen in a format that is very much tailored better to me experiencing it, right? I'm a big film guy. I love watching movies. Movies are my preferred medium when it comes to consuming content. So reading a book isn't always, especially off of a movie I've already seen, isn't always the the best way for me to experience something and it kind of can be a drag sometimes. I didn't feel that way at all with this book. I actually couldn't put it down um, when I was reading it. I wanted to read it so much more every day. I was reading a chapter, two chapters a night before I would go to bed and I would go to bed going, dang, I was still reading this book, but I have to go to bed. I have work in the morning. It was just so entertaining. And I think part of that is Quentin Tarantino's writing in his films, I think we all can agree is very entertaining. Quentin Tarantino's writing is very pleasurable to the ear on screen. Reading it, it is also very pleasurable uh, for the brain, honestly. Um, one thing I really like, and this is something that maybe for me, this may be, this is more of a personal preference type thing. 
I am very bad with like heavy dialogue, uh, description ridden, like opaque prose, if you know what I mean. Like, I've tried and I'm to read some old books. Like I've tried reading Joseph Conrad's *Heart of Darkness*, a book that I ultimately want to return to, but I don't think I was ready for when I started reading it. Um, there's just, and I think it's just because I am a very novice reader. Prose is something that's very that can very much turn me off to reading a story. Um, this is very straightforward when you're reading it. Um, you know, he gets right to the point of what's going on, right to the point of the action. Right, there's some descriptions here and there of the environments, but it's really like, you know, what this is gonna look like. You 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 pretty much know, like, this isn't so far removed from our experience that you wouldn't be able to like understand like what this world is. So there's not a lot of catching up that the book tries to do to like catch up the reader on like, oh, what does this look like? What's that look like? What's what's this over here? What's that over here? It just sort of happens very naturally and smoothly through the book, which helped me very much because I hate reading just tons of background and description and all that jazz. And this book finds a very, very uh, pleasurable way to incorporate all of that into there. Um, when it came to the characters, obviously, Rick Dalton was one of my favorite characters in the movie. Obviously, he's one of the three main characters. I loved seeing his sort of, you know, his, his you know, this underlying bipolarness that you, that's very clear in his character. You know, he, he has this little uh, uh, tics uh, that he has. Uh, he has his fits of rage. And, um, you know, all of that really does come through in the book uh, still. And his character is virtually the same. What I really liked concerning his character um, was a lot more fleshed out between the scenes of him and the little girl um, that he meets on the set of Lancer. Uh, there's an extra scene in the book with them that honestly was so touching and so amazing and beautiful that it made me not only love his character a lot more, but even but love her character as well. Uh, that was really, really nice to, to, to read, honestly. I really like the Rick Dalton parts of this book. Sharon Tate parts, there's actually a lot more in the book to flesh her out. Uh, there's a lot more backstory about her. Uh, there's more scenes with her. There's more dialogue with her. And I think a lot of people who maybe felt like that was a sore spot in the film for them, I think this might help remedy some of, some of that uh, when they're reading the story or reading the book. I know for me personally that... Uh, that wasn't necessarily a big issue for me in the movie because um, I sort of understood what her place was in the movie and I was okay with that. But there was a lot more of her in the book that I think, um, you know, I, I thought was very nice and I wasn't at all bored by. However, outstandingly, abundantly, above all, my favorite character in this book was Cliff Booth, who was also my favorite character in the movie. But this is very interesting. Because when you're watching the movie Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Cliff Booth is very suave, he's very cool, just chill guy. And, uh, you know, that's one of the best, that's one of the, the, the best parts about his character. That's one of the most entertaining parts about his character. That's where a lot of uh, his best moments come from, his cool, calm, collected uh, persona and head that he has on him. The thing about his character in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and when looking at his character's past, is that you find uh, what a lot of things that sort of paints us a very, uh, uh, somewhat of a different picture of Cliff Booth. Now he's still very cool, calm, and collected. He talks a lot more in the book, which I think is something that a lot of people who, you know, were very into the, mis the mystery about Cliff Booth. Um, that may turn you off or it may uh, make you more interested. You know, he has this whole thing where he likes to go watch movie, artsy movies in the cinema. And he goes, yeah, and he kind of yay or nays them, right? And he's like, oh, was that good? Was that not good? I don't know. And it's very interesting because he's like, and he hates American films. And I think it's because of um, going through World War II. That's the other thing. Obviously, he's a war hero. I mentioned that in the movie. In the book, they go really in depth on that as well. You hear a lot about his time in the war. And you hear how that sort of informed the type of person that he is. 
And there are a couple moments in the book con- con- uh, concerning Cliff Booth where I found myself a little shocked <laughs> by uh, what, he do- what he had done. Um, and yeah, they do touch on the mystery of him and his wife, um, whether or not he killed her, uh, which is still no less of a mystery in the book. <laughs> However, there's a little bit, there's, there's a couple things that they throw, a couple curveballs they throw away about his past and about that moment in particular that sort of make you question, you know, whether you thought one way about it, you might think the other way. And if you thought that way, maybe you might think the other way about that situation. Um, and one of them really, I think, ran the risk of making Cliff Booth an unlikable character, which I think, which I think is a, is a pretty big risk because I think he's clearly one of the most beloved characters in that movie. So what Quentin, I think Tarantino took a big risk that in my personal opinion paid off in the book with his character by adding all this detail, adding all this backstory, sort of an unveiling um, what the mystery is surrounding him. And then at the same time, creating more mystery by adding more details to the plot. Um, and I thought that was really, really cool. A lot of the events in the book are also not in the order that they're presented in the film, which I thought was very good for the structure of this book because it can get kind of tiring reading a book and thinking, oh, this is going in the same way the film was. And it's not that the film, it's not that the book completely rearranges the order, but certain events are not in the order that they were in the, in the movie chron- chronologically. And that made the read a lot more interesting because you might be going, oh, where's this? Oh, this is in the place of this. And you get to learn about something else. Well, and, and it kind of makes you forget whatever it was that you were thinking was going to be there. <laughs> and I thought that was really cool as well. Um, this is, honestly, it was a very, very fun read. And I, I don't think I could get enough. I, could, I honestly could have read a, a twice as long version of it. Like, that's how much, like, when I got to the end of the book, I felt myself go like, ah, oh, man, I really wish there was more. And I think that's one of the best things that, you know, anybody who's a fan of Quentin Tarantino understands about his work is that he sort of is like the, you know, leave him wanting more at the end. Kill Bill is a four-hour movie, and I really could watch a whole nother hour of Kill Bill, and that's not even an exaggeration. I really, really love everything about that story, and I think he wraps it up well. I think it's perfectly paced, but... There's a part of me that's just like, dang, I really could watch more of this movie. <laughs> so yeah, so. I'll talk about my favorite chapter of the book now, and then I'll sort of, we'll go from there into me showing you some of the extra goodies that are in the book that I think, in this particular hardcover version of the book, that I think really, you know, sort of make getting the hardcover version worth it and a better experience, I think. Although reading the paperback version is totally fine if you don't want to spend the money, but I think getting all the extra goodies in here is really... It's really special, especially for people who love the movie. So my favorite chapter of the book, undoubtedly, was a chapter that took place during the period of time in which Rick Dalton is making films with Italian directors, right? Making the spaghetti Western-type movies, the, uh, uh, the Italian action movies, and stuff like that. And it is the, there is a scene called Aldo, there's a chapter called Aldo Ray. And Aldo Ray is an actor with a very spotted and tumultuous legacy um, in Hollywood. And, you know, he, Cliff Booth and Rick Dalton are all in Spain making a movie. Um, I want to say for Sergio Corbucci, but I could be wrong. It could have been for uh, Antonio Margheriti. So... They're there, they're making the movie, and it is just a scene between Aldo Ray and Cliff Booth in the middle of the night. And it's very much in the contract of, you know, Aldo Ray, that uh, they keep him away from the bottle because he'll go off the rails real quick. And there's just a scene where, and it's not even that long either, where him and uh, uh, Cliff sort of, cross paths in a hallway and he's like hey (laughs) you know what I mean and there's just something really beautiful about the sort of camaraderie that they find together the sort of respect that they have for each other 
uh, the sort of, I don't want to say budding friendship because it's very clear that like these people probably never see each other again after this. But it's just really cool to just see a scene that's just all dialogue between somebody who was a real person interacting with Cliff Booth. And I think it all just comes down to Tarantino's just a great writer. And I don't want to spoil too much of the scene uh, of the chapter because it was a really, really good chapter and you should just read it. But that was undoubtedly my favorite chapter. Also, Mr. Quentin Tarantino sort of enters the movie, <laughs> enters the book a little bit uh, with little details surrounding certain characters um, and a specific uh, location, um, which if you've heard him talk on any of the podcasts, you know what that is, uh, and you know why, how he's connected through, uh, specifically his stepfather, so, but yeah, no, honestly, I love this book, I loved it, favorite book of the, uh, that I've read this year, uh, I can't wait to see him write more novels and what they're gonna be like, and, you know, this is just, it's, it's great, honestly. It's great to see one of my favorite filmmakers, you know, turn into a man of letters, as he puts it, and really nail it on the first try, honestly. He really nails this book. I, I honestly, this could have been a flop, but, uh, but he really creates, I think, an incredible piece of work that is a great companion piece to the film. Um, which I think is the best that this could ever have been because the film did come first. So yeah, that's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the book. Uh, I'll get to showing you guys the cool st extra stuff that they put inside the book. And then, uh, yeah, thank you very much uh, for watching this after that. So as I said, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, uh, the hardcover edition comes with a lot of extra goodies uh, that you may want if you're especially a film fan or a fan of the movie. Uh, and I will be going over with that with you right now. This is the cover. As you can see, it says Deluxe Edition with bonus material featuring new photos. So yeah. So when you flip through the book, about halfway through the book, there are some pictures uh, which are really, really cool. Here we have uh, scenes that I think were shot, but obviously weren't included in the film itself. So here we have uh, Rick Dalton on the phone. We have just Cliff Booth chilling here. This beautiful picture of uh, uh, Margot Robbie as Sharon Tate. We have what looks like another scene that uh, she was involved in didn't include her. This is uh, obviously <laughs> uh, some of the people at Spot and Ranch. We have, uh, man, I remember her name was Abigail in the episode of Tanner, but I can't remember what her name was. Uh, <laughs> I can't remember what the actress's name was, but, oh, Trudy Frazier. She was great. She was so good. She, she, her, her scenes, uh, were amazing in the movie. So yeah, we have Trudy Frazier. Um, we have a scene, uh, with Tim Roth, uh, that was clearly shot but didn't end up in the film uh we have some more stuff from the episode of tanner or was it tanner gosh i can't remember if it was called tanner or something else it was probably called something else and i'm totally calling it tanner <laughs> beautiful picture of margaret quayley that crazy director guy <laughs> lancer that's what it was i'm saying tanner but it was lancer and then yeah we have this scene which is in the book and clearly was also shot. Uh, Cliff Booth in the record store with some chick. And then we have Quentin Tarantino in front of a hot dog truck. Uh, so that's kind of cool. That's also his author picture in the back of the book. Which is pretty hilarious, if I do say so myself. So then moving to the back of the book, we have a bunch of cool fake um, uh, posters for the movies that... Uh, uh, Rick was in, uh, you know, some pictures from Bounty Law, TV guys that he was on, uh, the Bounty Law lunchbox, <laughs> uh, tons of other Bounty Law things, Mad Magazine type stuff. 
you know, some more stuff that Rick Dalton was in. Tanner, the Comanche Uprising, uh, Hellfire Texas, Jigsaw Jane, uh, you know, Nebraska Jim, Red Blood, Red Skin, Operacion Dynamite. And then we have this Mad Magazine uh, parody of Bounty Law, which is pretty cool. But then one of the cool parts of this whole thing, which I'll go back to, I completely skipped over, is you have a full episode script of Bounty Law. Uh, you know, executive produced by Bill Adams, producers Lee Donowitz and Robert Fuzz, executive story consultant Jesse H. Wester Westergaard, and it is written by Robert Fuzz, obviously Quentin Tarantino. And yeah, it's a whole script. It's a whole Bounty Loss TV script, which is really, really cool. Um, and I guarantee will be very, very fun reading for anybody who actually kind of likes those shows or even just was a big fan of, you know, just seeing what, an what a whole episode of Bounty Loss actually would have been like. So yeah. And that's basically everything extra that you get with the hardcover edition of the book. All right. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody who showed up to the last video. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe, do whatever. Let me know if you read this book, how you felt about it. Um, I know I had a great time, and I want to hear your thoughts too, because, you know, Quentin Tarantino is not a director who's far from anybody's opinion may very basically everybody has a, an opinion on him uh but if you've read this book i really uh want to hear your thoughts on it if you haven't read it i encourage you to pick it up uh i think it would be a very very uh cool experience and worth your time especially if you like quentin tarantino or you saw once upon a time in hollywood thank you very much guys and i'll see you guys next time